Okay, this is my first YouTube video ever, so go easy on me. My kids talked me into trying this out. This video is gonna be in two parts. The first part is gonna show you how I constructed the left and right sides, the bookshelves. The second video will show you how to do the middle portion where the TV and the recessed fireplace is. Um, hi, Teta. <laughs> uh, you're not gonna copy this exactly, um, but it's gonna show you ideas. I'm gonna say that because the left and the right sides are pre-existing bookshelves that I had and I kind of integrated them. So you're gonna learn tricks and tips um, to maybe integrate a piece of furniture you have, or you can just buy a bunch of kitchen cabinets and, and how I did the building of the shelves. I started with these two units I bought at a Goodwill store years ago for super cheap. I filled in the pre-existing shelf holes with spackle and I removed the molding that I didn't care for. And as you can see, they become the end units of this build-in. I bought unfinished 30 by 30 kitchen wall cabinets at Lowe's for about $80 each that will serve as the bases for the next section. Before starting to build, I took some time to think through my electrical needs. I want to be able to easily run cords and also have them hidden, being that I have all of the cable boxes, the router, and the cabinet lighting. There were two outlets along this wall on either side of the TV. First, I changed each of those outlets from a single gang box to a double gang box, making each of the two plugs become four plugs. Then I decided I'd set these cabinets one and a half inch off the wall to create accessible channels for cords and make each outlet accessible by cutting holes in the back of the cabinets. I also wanted to have an outlet right behind the TV high up on the wall, but I didn't want to add it to the same circuit where I already added those other outlets. So for this one, I ran it from the circuit in my bedroom down the wall. Next, I marked the studs on the wall for attaching the shelving. I'm using my favorite stud finding tool, the Stud Buddy. It is by far the easiest way to find studs. You slide it along the wall and it grips the nails with a magnet where the drywall is attached to the two by four. Now that I've found the studs, I can attach these end units to the wall. These cabinets will be flush with the back wall. I don't need them to be set off the wall for cord accessibility because there's no outlets in these end cabinets. I simply attach strips of wood to the back by nailing them to the sides and then screw them through the drywall to the wall studs. So this cabinet is going to sit right to the right of this taller cabinet and obviously to the left on the other end. Um, I'm gonna set it a, a, with a three inch gap right here. The reason I'm doing, and I'm also gonna pull it out from the wall by putting a stud. Um, I'm gonna pull it out from the wall because I'm gonna be creating channels where I can run electrical cords because I'm gonna be putting lighting at the top of the cabinet and I need a place to run the electric. So I calculated that I wanna pull this away from the wall about an inch and a half so I have installed a stud against the floor that is uh, 33 inches long because the cabinet's 30 inches. And like I said, I want to make a three inch gap right here that will cover up at the end. Um, and then I'm going to build a support that's going to house the cabinet. I need to raise that cabinet up so I can put trim on it. So I'm going to be building a support to put right in front of that. I'm going to screw it to that stud uh, and I'm going to raise and set the cabinet on top of that support. Since I'm going to be spacing this an inch and a half off the wall, which is the reason for this two by four back here against the wall, uh, I'm going to also put some studs attached to the studs that are behind the drywall to attach the cabinet and the shelving so that it's also an inch and a half from the actual wall. Okay, so the cabinet fits great on the base. 
Uh, we'll be now able to put baseboard trim there, brings the cabinet up. Uh, also see, I uh, installed spacers. These are one by two pieces of wood, just random scrap strips. Um, they're some attached to the cabinet base, couple attached to the shelf on the left. That's gonna allow me something to attach that spacer board to. And I'm not ready to leave this on here. Uh, I need to still cut the back of this cabinet to make an opening for the outlet that's back there. All right, we're gonna repeat the whole process on the other side. This side's a little more complex than the other side because of those cables that are running up from the basement. Uh, once I got that notched out, I also made a notch on the bottom of the cabinet. I made sure the measurement from the other shelf to the base is three inches because that's where my spacer is going to go, just like the other side. And now that it's measured perfectly and we have our notch and the cables can come up, I can secure the base to uh, the back, the back uh, two by four. Before I set the cabinet on this side, I determined where I was going to need holes in my cabinet to feed those wires and I cut them with my jigsaw. So here's what that looked like. My outlet on the right side is a circular hole that I covered with a grommet. That's where my lighting cord will go through. And on the left, I made a slightly larger hole because there were some, uh, there were some bigger things that needed to fit through. Okay, stepping back a little to show you where we are. Um, after getting those bases secured, I took some beadboard, and made a backing for that shelf on the left. I also cut out the tops. For these cabinets, um, the shelving above will be uh, this length 30 by 12. And I'll probably go up just a little bit higher than that shelf to give it a tiered look. Still not exactly sure how I'm constructing the middle for the fireplace. I think it'll be easier to figure out once I'm finished the two sides. In order to attach the tops of these base cabinets, there is a space when you purchase these. There's a dead space in here. So I just took some scraps of MDF and I um, made some uh, fillers. So I have a place to nail the, the top to when I nail it. I'm just going to put some glue on top of the spacer boards and I'm making little marks that I can get rid of quickly just so that I know where I put those spacer boards to put my nail gun. These recess so it'll be easy to fill those in. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the doors from those base cabinets. I'm going to prime and paint those, and I'm going to build the shelves that are going to go on top of both of those bases. I'm going to paint these with a brush just for the primer. Um, I suggest using a foam roller for painting cabinets and smooth surfaces. Um, but I have a bunch of stuff in the garage right now that's uh, primed and ready to paint a lot of the shelving so I just didn't feel like dirtying another roller for this little bit of priming. Okay I built the top of the bookshelves um, down here in my basement. So I have two long uh, 12 inch deep sides uh, the top has a hole in it for the light. 
I attached the top and the sides with my Craig Jig pocket holes. And then I put just some scrap wood brackets on the bottom, the top, and the middle, um, which I'll use to screw through the studs in the wall to attach it to the wall. And they fit like a glove. I'm going to put the beadboard's going to be nailed to the back. Um, I have to prime and paint those. Looking good. As far as planning goes, I had a general idea starting from the outside in of what I wanted to do. Made sure I did the electrical channels and a lot of the projects kind of um, coming together as I do it. Uh, the most important thing is to think, think, think it through. The next few steps really bring this together. The beadboard is painted the same as my wall color and attached to the back. The spacer pieces are nailed in place. The shelves are installed and finish trim is nailed in place. Let's break that down a little bit. On the bottom cabinet portion, the three inch spacer is attached between the two units right there to the left of the doors. On the top half of the shelf, I wanted a little lip so I used a five inch spacer piece. I attached finish trim to the top and the bottom of the beadboard backing. The top there is shoe molding and the bottom is a one by two. You can use whatever you want for this. Let's go into a little bit more detail about the shelves. The shelves, my shelves are all removable but at the same time, they're pretty permanent. Um, I installed one by one blocks onto the shelf, I'm sorry, onto the sides of the case um, to sit the shelf on top of. As far as the shelf itself, the top, and I, I attached a one by two edge onto the shelf to make it look like it's fatter than it really is when it's sitting uh, in the bookshelf. Make sure when you measure the depth of your shelf, if you're going to add the edge molding, the one by two, make sure you add that three quarters of an inch. Otherwise your shelf isn't going to fit. The way that I attach this edge, I put my shelf top down. So I just choose the side that I think looks the best. Put that down. I go to the edge of a counter. You can use your workbench or your kitchen counter like me. I set the molding here, feel the edges are even, use my grad nailer, if you set it right at the edge of the counter and you point it straight, it's going to go right in. Don't point it down at all because it will come right through the top, your, your top of your shelf. So I attached these one by ones, which really were just uh, leftover scraps of wood that I cut down. It's three quarter inch wood that I just cut down to one inch with my table saw. I did screw them in and spackle over the holes to clean it up. Now, as for the distance between the shelves, this is a little bit tricky. Um, I wanted this shelf to line up with the shelf that's gonna go here and then the space from here to here obviously lines up with this one and this shelf um, is the same spacing. Hanging these brackets so that the shelves are even with each other and uh, you know level is really quite easy. What I did was I made a template with a scrap piece of wood. The distance from here to here happens to be I believe 15 inches so I had a piece of wood that fits in here that's 15 inches high. And then I set this molding on top. This is not the template, this one's smaller. The distance from here to here is 10 inches. This is the 10 inch template. So this is how it worked. I first, I start from the bottom up, mounted this one. The lights that I installed on the top of the cabinets are from a company called Fernlight. Um, I have 
two lights on this side and two lights on the other side connected and each plugged into two separate outlets. You can connect up to six of these lights. Um, so I could have just done one, um, but I think I had originally bought two and then decided to build the build in bigger than I thought I was gonna make it and ordered two more. Um, and I'm fine with that because I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the middle yet and whether I want one cord up there or not. So these lights are called puck lights. They set into the hole and I actually put half inch blocks of plywood underneath where they get screwed down because they were hanging a little low and I wanted them flush with the top of the shelf. So uh, one of them has the outlet and then they connect to each other and the other one's up at the top there. And the way that these lights work, they're very cool. Um, they have three stages of lights they have a uh, there's a dimmer that's just a touch dimmer so off low medium high uh, very cool really easy to install uh, fern light sells um, wire in or plug in i got the plug in uh, and i'm really happy with them Okay, so in order to hang the hang uh, handles onto the doors, I made a template to make it easy so that they're all placed, um, makes it super easy for measuring. The only thing you have to measure is the template to get it right once. And go nice and slow so you don't wiggle the wood. So here's where we are at this point. Part two of this video is going to show you how I constructed the middle with the recessed electric fireplace. I'll also go into the crown molding and the base trim. For now, happy building. See you in part two.